Remember the good old days when you were a kid and had boundless energy? So up until very recently, I thought that part of being an adult was existing in a state of chronic tiredness with low energy levels, but it doesn't have to be. Hi, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty and I'm a male model, physiotherapist and fitness enthusiast. In this video, I will be sharing with you seven steps for limitless energy. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Step number one is optimizing your sleep. Studies have found that sleeping seven and a half hours from 12 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. was not as effective as sleeping from 10.30 to 6 a.m. Sleep also occurs in 90 minute cycles. So we want to work backwards from the time that we have to wake up in order to find the time that we have to go to bed. You want to aim for about four to five complete sleep cycles. And ideally, you don't want to wake up during a sleep cycle, particularly during the deep stage of sleep. It would be much better if you wake up between sleep cycles when you're in the lighter stages of sleep. Step number two is plan your day the night before. Studies have found that we have the most energy and productivity the first thing in the morning after we wake up. Why, therefore, will we waste it planning out our daily tasks when we could be spending that energy on actually starting and completing those important daily tasks? Additionally, there is research to suggest that our minds are good at subconsciously problem solving overnight so letting our errands or our tasks stew as we sleep may help us to complete them more efficiently the next day step number three is to drink plenty of water there is a caveat to this of course you want to slow down the amount that you drink a few hours before bed because if you drink too much before bed it's going to affect your sleep and as we talked about in the first point sleep is extremely important our bodies are 70% water, so we need to maintain these levels as we are constantly losing water to the environment through sweating, breathing, and urinating. Step number four is to use caffeine strategically. When we wake up in the morning, our bodies are flooded with the hormone cortisol, which is the stress hormone. This is what helps us feel alert and wide awake as we wake up. We want these levels of cortisol to settle down first before we have our first dose of caffeine because caffeine and cortisol don't mix very well. Therefore, drinking our first cup of coffee 90 to 120 minutes after waking up would be beneficial to prevent that dreaded caffeine crash in the afternoon. Step number five is to consider your meals carefully. The timings, the macronutrients, the quality and the quantity of the meal. There is no specific diet that works for everyone. We are all individuals. However, what is for certain is that eating whole foods, plenty of vegetables and fruits are beneficial. A lunch that is high in carbohydrates, particularly refined carbohydrates and sugars, can trigger an insulin spike, which can lead to the all too familiar afternoon slump that we get. Here's what you can do to optimize your meals to feel less tired. So in the morning, you'd either not eat a meal or have a very small meal, which is high in protein, maybe a bit higher in fat, and lower in carb, if not scrap out the carbs entirely. So essentially what you want to do is keep your carbs very low or almost non-existent. Pretty much do like a ketogenic diet with high protein, high fats during the day if you're not working out or if you're not planning on training. And then about an hour and a half to two hours before training, you can have a small amount of carbs, so a piece of fruit or a small sandwich or a piece of fruit and a small sandwich which is what I do. This will give you some energy in order to complete the workout. After you have finished your training session, that's when you can have the most carbohydrates because you need to replenish those glycogen stores. After you finish your workout, it'll probably be in the evening time. So by eating more carbohydrates, you are priming your body for sleep because carbs, as we have already established, make you feel more tired. I actually use intermittent fasting in the first couple of hours of the day to complete my most mentally taxing tasks. Step number six is to move your body. There is no dispute that exercise and activity is extremely important for your physical health as well as your mental health, but it can also help improve your energy levels. It's about those small, sustainable changes over a long period of time, as opposed to intense episodes of periodic exercise. Make your exercise a priority. Schedule time in the day for what matters most. Step number seven is find a balance between work and rest. Sometimes we feel guilty because we're not being productive when we are resting or when we are supposed to be resting. We feel like we should be hustling, grafting, working all the time. And the truth is we need to strike a balance between both because working hard and resting are actually on the same team. What you have to remember is life is a marathon and not a sprint. Resting and having downtime this evening may mean that you can work more efficiently the next day as you've had time to unwind. Studies have found that 10 minutes of laughter have similar positive benefits on your health as getting two to three hours of sleep. I hope that you found this video useful and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. 
I'm on my own, broken and alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found.